everyone. Uh, my name is Dr. Faith. I'd like to welcome you to the Yes Network event. The Yes Network is a professional organization that's designed to empower, enlighten, and educate business professionals to keep on striving. This year, we've shifted our schedule just a tad bit, and we are going to be networking every quarter. So we're going to jumpstart this 2014 New Year with a dynamic speaker. His name is Stanley Quartivian, and he's going to be here very, very shortly to talk to us about achieving permanent success. So what I have designed for you as a quick icebreaker, just so that you guys can get to know each other, I know very shortly you're going to introduce yourself um, to our viewing audience that's streaming live with us, compliments of my video talk. Uh, what I want you to do, think about that one thing that you resolved to do in 2014. Because today Stanley's going to really, really focus on the importance of shifting your mindset. He's going to deliver what he likes to call a mind detox. And he's going to show you some strategies and some techniques that you can apply in order to make that one New Year's resolution, if you call it. Some people call it goals. I just say I resolve to do different things. So if you can think of that one thing that you resolve to do this year, all right? Some of us have a, have a laundry list of things, but think of one thing. And then when you think about that one thing, I'm then going to ask you to share that one thing with your partner beside you. Okay? You don't have to tell everybody, but kind of just share with someone beside you. And throughout Stanley's presentation today, I really want you to think about how you're going to take the strategies that he shares and then apply it to that one area. Okay? So that's going to be our little icebreaker. We're going to be talking and mingling in just a second. So take 30 seconds. Think about that one thing that you resolved to do this year. Business, professional, relationship. Good, good to see you. And guys, for those of you who are listening and streaming live, please visit our website, youngentrepreneursociety.ning.com. There we have an online presence. You can invite and become friends with over 100 business professionals that are on the move to empower, enlighten, and educate. So start a profile. It's all free and get connected. Again, the Yes Network, our online presence, youngentrepreneursociety.ning.com. All right, has everyone at least shared that one thing you resolved to do? <laughs> I heard somebody say work smarter, not harder. I like that. I like that. Awesome. Would anyone else like to share? Yes, CJ, what would you like to do this year? Uh, my new resolution? Yes. Is to get good grades. Oh, yes. yes. I'm with you on that, CJ. Most definitely. And you know, just I like to share mine because I want to hold myself accountable. And then, of course, you guys are here so you can all be my accountability partner, checking with me from time to time. My resolve this year is to do more follow ups. Okay? So I not only want to talk business, I don't want to just get the deal on the table, but I want to always follow up in an effort to see the deal. So I want to make sure that I'm more effective in the follow-up process. Good example, just yesterday, and Stan is my witness because I called him too, I was making calls from a full week of um, missed calls because I wasn't in the office until about 7.30 last night. I always have my cutoff calls at about 5 o'clock or so, but that's just how many people I had to return their phone call. And I want people to know they're important, what they want to talk about, what they want to discuss, because besides the Yes Network's quarterly events, I also do professional speaking, and I'm a certified life coach as well. And I work with the public school district in curriculum and development. So I have a full plate, but I want everybody to know that I'm connected with that they're important. What they need me for, what we need to talk about and discuss, it's at the top of my priority list. And they won't feel that if I don't return their calls. You know, if I don't return their email and then give them that attention. So that's my goal. 
this year. I resolved to be more effective in my follow-up. Would anyone else like to share their goal with Stephanie? Mine is to feel good. Okay. So in every decision that I make uh, in that moment, to ask myself, is this going to make me feel good? And I think it's no, it's not. It's not just kind of like, I'm telling you, that's important. And it's not selfish. You have to put yourself first sometimes. You have to make sure things are conducive to your lifestyle and the things you need. Anybody else want to share? Yes. Mine is to lose weight. I know it's not every year, but uh -huh. this time I'm determined to stick to that goal because it's affecting my blood pressure. So I want to make sure that I lose weight. Yeah. And it's kind of you can do. Let's give her a hand. Anybody else want to share their resolve? Yes, Ms. Cassandra. Mm -hmm. Mine is also to lose weight. Mm -hmm. But I've done that before, so my goal is really to be more consistent this okay. year, and not to lose it and then get it back. Okay. So that's my Awesome, and she did it. She's on the floor. I'm her witness. She has a little bambino in her lap right now, <laughs> and and I've seen her shed like how much? Shed about oh, seventy-five. I mean, a lot. So it always, it always comes back. Yeah. So. But you can do it. You can do it. Definitely. Right, guys? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else want to share? It's just good that we're getting it out. So we have goals. We have lose, loss, loss of weight. And then we have putting you first, Miss Stephanie. Miss Marlene, what do you want to do? Well, I'd like to concentrate this year on building awareness to my fundraising program that I do with Trauma. Okay. And helping more nonprofits and organizations raise fun and putting the fun into fundraising. Oh, I like that. I love that. Putting the fun into fundraising. You're showing the nonprofits how to do that. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you're going to learn more about that when you talk in a few seconds. Okay, so this really, did I miss anybody? Anybody else want to? I already know Mr. Kenner works smarter, yes, not harder. Mm -hmm. I take that for everybody. Everybody yes, walk away with that. Yes, sir. That's it. We're on the spot. We can't leave. Stand this. He's calling you. Wow, thank you. Um, well, my goal is to make sure everybody has goals. Um, that's one goal, is to make sure that people have goals. So if you start talking to me, that's the first thing I'm probably going to lean in on you with. But my mantra this year is to be fit and lean in 2014. And um, I've, I've committed myself to that. I don't do resolutions because most times people are 10 days, we're 18 days in the, to the year and people have already moved away from whatever they resolve to do. Sure. But I'm committing myself to having a, a uh, fit and lean mind, body, and spirit. And I'm going to do that by making sure that I'm putting the right things in my mind, making sure that I'm putting the right things in my mouth, and making sure that I'm, I'm putting in the right miles. So I'm going to um, do that and, and, and watch the results happen and I'm already seeing it. So. All right, I love it. I love it. I love it. And I can already visualize you in your trip. Yes, I see it. Lean, mean machine. That's <laughs> it. I, I, I resolve. I'll say resolve. But I, I just want to be down 15 by uh, February 27th. So we all heard that. So we're going to hold her accountable. I'm going to be texting an email. We're watching pictures of you on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's up for the challenge. I said that's awesome. Let's do it. Let's do it. Awesome. Would you like to share? We don't want to leave you out. Okay. Um, not just everyone said you know, to be more, um, to lose weight, but I just want to be healthy. That's my mind. Very good. Hold on, man. Hold on. Okay, look. What we're going to do, kind of, we warmed up. Thank you so much for sharing, you know, um, and kind of warming up the place. I share mine. You're the speaker. You got to just get You can share when you're speaking. Time. Yeah, hold on now. Let's set the stage. Let's get you situated. So this is what we're going to do. Stanley's going to come up for about 30 minutes, okay? And he's going to talk to you about achieving permanent success because we have it fresh on our mind right now, that one resolve for the year. So he's going to dive right into it. And once he's done, your lunch, if you've ordered, or your breath should be well on its way. At the end of today's session, the last 30 minutes, Here's the platform. Let us know the things that you're doing. Let us know uh, yourself, your business, websites, products, and services. Is that okay for us to do that? Okay. So, look, Stanley Fuzzy-Bian. I met Stanley last year. Yes. Last year we met. And um, 
let me tell you, I knew immediately that this was someone that I wanted to remain connected to uh, professionally. He's an individual who delivers very thought-provoking statements, but then also you can tell that he's genuine about the things that he do. So once I have an opportunity to engage in a conversation with Stanley, I'm honest <coughs> and I exaggerate my life changed because I was very impressed by this brother who truly knew who he is, where he's coming from, and he has a dynamic story. Um, life hasn't always been easy for him, but like everyone, uh, not everyone, but like the few, he's overcome and defeated a lot of odds. And you can hear that and you can feel that through his platform. So I'm just going to just move to the side and give Stanley Point of an opportunity to help you detox your mind and set you guys up so that you can accomplish permanently your things that you resolved to do in 2014. So guys, help me welcome Stanley Point of view. I have no idea what she was talking about. Right now. Oh, <laughs> My name is Stanley Poitier. I'm originally from Haiti. The country that they call the first <coughs> in the Western Hemisphere. And me personally, I don't believe there's such a thing as a poor country. There's a lot of poor people in the country. But the country itself is not poor. When I came to the United States of America, I went to school in North Miami Senior High. And one of the things that happened to me is I find myself imitating the culture that was already there. And because I did not know who I was, instead of stepping out and being the person that I was called to be, I find myself attracted to the crowd that I wanted to be. One of the things that I talk about in Mind Detox is that imitation is actually a mental drug to where you're denying yourself to accepting somebody else. In other words, you're minimizing your potential to idolizing somebody else's mess. And how many people will agree with me that this country is a mess? <laughs> so now, we find ourselves in a place where we idolize the mess instead of generating from ourselves the gifts and the talents that are in us to fix the mess. So I started getting involved in gang activities. Perfect place to start, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I had a 3.5 GPA. I was very smart, very talented. I started in the 10th grade, and there's a class called ESOL class. I don't know if it's the office that was in high school. Yes. I had to go through ESOL to learn the language. When I first got here, I used to talk like this. You know, my English was not that good. So you can imagine how I was made fun of. And because I was made fun of, I saw myself as the person that they were portraying me to be. Are oh, you stupid? You can't speak English go back to the country where you come from, you both, you know, both people, they used to call me both. And I found myself taking those names and calling myself that, when it was never my idea. So instead of following the plan that obviously was there for me, I had a 3.5 GPA, uh, I, I had a bright future, I spent two years in the streets. I barely graduated from high school. And the only reason why I graduated from high school is because my parents would not give up on me. My parents literally had to go to the teachers to allow me to take the test, the last test in order to pass, because I skipped so many classes. And they had to have a meeting, and because I was a bright student, they allowed me to take the test and I passed. That's the only reason why I have a high school diploma. Why that happened to me? Why I chose the mess instead of who I was. That's why I call this mind detox. Because what happened is, whatever you see the most, whatever you listen to the most, that's what you become. The definition of the word faith is, faith come by hearing. So what you hear is what you have faith in. 
So you can listen to positivity one day out of the week, and six days out of the week, you continue to listen to the mass. Guess what you develop faith in? You know, most people would rather sit in front of a TV. I don't know how people do it for five hours watching scandal. And if you want to see scandal, all you have to do is just look at your life. You don't have to watch TV more. You know, there's a wise man named Lao Tzu. He said, the truth is ugly. So today we're going to talk about some ugly words. Because the only way to describe the truth is ugly. What people do not want to hear. And here's what people want to hear. <clears throat> Introduction to my new self. January 1st. 2014. I'm a new person. I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to make more money. And everything is going to be perfect this year. And you know why? Because I prepared for it. I prepared for it. In September or October, I was busily engaged in shopping and making other people rich. I was preparing. Come November, I stuffed myself with meals and I engaged myself in gluttony. I was preparing to lose weight in 2014. In December, I spent the money that I did not have, got myself into debt to impress people who really don't care about me because I was preparing to get out of debt in 2014. Introduction to the new me. One day, I will change everything that I've been doing for the entire year. So most people want to hear January 1st, 2014. Let me tell you a little story. Once upon a time, there was a scorpion and a frog. The frog obviously knew how to swim across the river. The scorpion needed to get across the river, but could not swim across the river. So the scorpion made his way to the frog, to down the river, to speak to the frog. And made, and made a uh, proposition to the frog. Mr. Frog, I'm going to get across the river, but I don't know how to swim. Would you please put me on your back and take me across the river? The frog responded, are you crazy? The minute that I put you on my back, you will sting me. So said, come on, Mr. Frog. I don't know how to swim. Only you know how to swim. If I sting you, we'll both die. And the frog brought into the philosophy of the scorpion and put the scorpion on his back. About halfway across the river, just as the scorpion, as the frog thought, the scorpion stung him. It happened so quick that he did not even know what, 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 what hit him. And he felt his leg getting numb. And he can no longer push his way across the river. And as he started to sink, at his last breath, he said to the scorpion, you promise not to stay me. And the scorpion responded, I'm sad. It's my nature. The word nature in Latin is natura. Intrinsic characteristic. Here's what that means. You will never perform beyond your own personal nature. Let me say that again. Mm -hmm. You will never perform beyond your own personal nature. But here's the good news. What is the nature of our being? <coughs> 
There's a scripture that says, as a man thinketh, so is he. Is is be. Who you be? The nature is your thought process. So the good news is, if you change your thought process, you can change your nature. But here's the problem. What are you feeding your mind? Just as the body, when you feed the body, that's what the body becomes. What are you feeding your mind? Now we get into the nature of conditioning. So if you want to lose weight, you should have started in October. Like I did. October 15th was my new year. That's when I decided I want to drop 30 pounds. Listen, I didn't say I want to lose weight. I want to drop 30 pounds, specific. Every goal you have must be specific. If you don't put a number to it, it becomes a wish. You know, most people think they have goal list. What they really have is wish list. Dr. Richard Wiseman, one of the greatest authorities in New Year's resolution, made a powerful statement when he said, the reason why, well, one of the reasons, there's many reasons, one of the reasons why many people fail in their New Year's resolution is because they think that they can use it as an excuse for what they have not been doing prior to the new year. The word resolution means the quality of being resolute. Resolute means to be firmly determined and purpose. How many people know, not too many people know what the purpose is? How many of you know that not too many people put purpose to what they're doing? So my number one question to you is, as, as, as you think about your New Year's resolution, what's the purpose behind it? Because if you don't put a purpose to it, then you'll never get to it. Let me tell you another story to illustrate a point of having purpose. Back in World War II, enemies attacked a Navy ship. There was 1,100 members, crew members, on the ship. And as the ship sank after being hit by a missile, they were at sea for five days. They were starving, getting attacked by sharks in the frigid water. And as the current crew, nine of the officers away from the remaining of the crew members, there was a young officer who saw that they were losing hope. And he started talking to them. Can you imagine your wife not knowing where you are right now if you're still alive? Can you imagine your daughter not knowing if you made it after the attack. What are you going to do when you get back home? What you was doing is to give them to visualize. Giving them a vision of why, where they were, were not their destination. A vision is a destination. And as a result of that, two-thirds of the crew members died, and all nine of them died. Why? Because they had a reason to fight. Here's four problems with New Year's resolutions. Number one, they're too big. I want to make more money. I 
want to lose weight. Well, what does that look like? Can you see it in your mind? Your mind thinks in pictures. If you don't give your mind pictures to think about like the young officer was doing, then you really don't have a true purpose for what you're doing. Number two, there are too many. We live in a finite body, and we live in time. There's not enough time in the day to focus on 100,000 goals. Is it okay to have a long list of goals, long term? Yes. But for a supposedly New Year resolution, you want to focus on one thing at a time. So what is your number one focus for this year? What is that one thing that you want to change for this year? Can we focus on that? Can you imagine? I mean, let's be honest. How many people have made New Year's resolutions and actually broken? Okay, I'm guilty of that. I make them all the time. To the point where I said, you know what, I'm no longer going to make it. Any New Year's resolution. I said I wasn't going to eat that, but I'm eating it now. So we all break them. So we all fail. However, when you really think about it, a lot of us, we're really not specific about what we want. We just think we want this, and we just think we want that, and we go after them. There's a good scripture that actually shows you how important it is to focus on one thing at a time. Do you understand that God himself only focused on one thing at a time? Look at creation. Hello? The first day, what did he do? He created light. Right? And then the next day, he said, okay, well, now that I've done light. First of all, why did he do light? Light signifies vision. Quality. Listen, you can't create what you can't see. So the question is, can you see it? Do you truly see this? Before I lost weight, I bought this shirt. That was prior to October 15, 2012. So whatever you're seeing, I'm going to see evidence of it in your life right now. You want to get into that? You want, you want to lose weight? Fine. How much you want to lose? Go spend a hundred. Okay. Go spend, I, I dare you, go spend $200 to buy the clothes that you want to fit in. <laughs> Whatever is that crazy amount for you. If it's $1,000, go spend it. I dare you to do that. And do it in receipt. Can you do that? Then we know you're serious. If you can't see it, you will not create it. So number one is to have vision. What is vision? Interesting word, vision. Vision is the map of what you want. Vision is the destination. Rather, it's not the map, it's actually the destination of where you want to go. That's your vision. The destination is not where you currently are. So when you have a vision, you have this big picture of yourself, I want to lose weight. Yes, but that's only a destination. I want to make more money. Yes, great. I'm happy for you. But that's only a destination. So now my question becomes to you, where's your map? There you on the floor right there. That's the map. <laughs> That's the map to purpose. Your map is the goal that you set for yourself. That's your map. The plan behind the goal is the route we're going to take. What happens is many people get stuck either here or there. 
They see their destination. They have the map, but they don't have a route. So my question to you is, where are you going? Destination. And I want you to think about this statement. If you're not going anywhere, you'll end up wherever you are. If you're not going anywhere, you'll end up wherever you are. Again, the truth is not pretty. Now that we talk about the goal, we talk about the plan, and I want you to notice something that's going to really shake your mind today. Because in the word go, half of it says what? I, I can hear it. Go! Hello? Go! How, sim how simple do you want it? Listen, when I had a vision of what I want to fit in, which is a medium size, Right? Guess what I did the very next day? I went. That's it. Simple. And guess what? The A <coughs> act. Hello? The L. Live it. Live it. It's not fun on paper. It's okay to write. That's a good start. But here is where I want you to get. Here's the most powerful three words that you will ever say to yourself. The most powerful three words. I did it. That's it. I did it. And then one year when I had a vision of myself where I want to be, I didn't wait till January the 1st. I went after it. Again, I told you, whatever you keep hearing, that's what you're going to keep believing. Yeah. Right? <clears throat> now here's one thing. This is T. You know what that is? That's my lunch. It's so good. I'm fasting for 21 days. I got more energy than most of you in the room. I only have six hours of sleep. I go to sleep at 12, wake up at six. My life is regimented. From the first two hours, I show that I'm serious about my health. From the second two hours, I show that I'm serious about changing my financial situation. And then the rest of the day is the rest of the day. So every single day for four hours <coughs> is total focus. And you say, well, that's too small. And that's why I want you to think small with your big dream. Because if you just stay in the dream, the vision is only the destination. It's not where you currently are. So if you get stuck there, taken too big, then you'll never get there. So what is it going to require of you as a plan to go and live and act on it? In life, nobody's going to give you anything. You want something, you believe in it, you'll go after it. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven dollars. I love the number seven because it's the number of completion. Who in the room believe that this is for you? Who in the room believe? <laughs> That's it, done. <laughs> I just paid for lunch. Exactly. Wow. Good. Do you really believe? Oh, thank you. Oh, yeah, little thing. Do 
you know you can believe something intellectually and have faith in its opposite? most people, well not most people, but some people talk about health. But when you look at what they go for, what they act on, and what they live, you ask yourself, have they ever heard of the word health? But every day they say they believe in health. The same is true for those who believe in wealth. They believe in wealth, right? But what they go for, what they act on, and what they live is debt. The majority of the country right now, one of the things I talk about in my detox, I put it on five mental drugs that's keeping people mediocre. One of them is, of course, I talked about it earlier, imitation. The other one is spending. It's a drug. In fact, you have a name for it now, shabaholic. Right? Whatever you spend your money on, whatever you spend your time on, is the life you own. It's the life that you're writing your ownership on. That is why when you purchase a house, you can leave. So most people spend money on things outside of their dreams, but they say they have a big dream. Spend it. What are you doing with your money, your resources? All of that is part of your plan. First of all, you want to lose weight. Yes. That's good. I'm happy for you. But are you calculating where are you spending your money when it comes to that? The plan. The next thing is, now that you have a route, is the uh, process. Yeah, this is what's not sexy. Oh, no, that's not sexy. Now, this is where you go on the actual trip. You see, you're looking at the map. You look at the destination. It looks beautiful, doesn't it? Have anybody ever remember going on the trip where you had to use a map to get there? Anybody? How colorful is the map? Really, isn't it? When you actually get on the trip and start driving, how beautiful is that? <laughs> exactly. The truth is ugly. The process is nothing like the destination or even the map. This is where you get nails in your tire. Yeah. This is where you get the detour. This is where you get the construction crew coming at the wrong time. You're running late. That's the construction crew. This is where you get the red lights. This is where you get the green lights. This is where you get the real deal. And what did I tell you? Most people are just stuck here. Or there. They never get to this. Write the vision and make a plan. Make a plan, meaning write it and make a plan. And then now let's get to the process. And this is where failure comes in. Your favorite subject, isn't it? <laughs> we all want success, don't we? We all want success. But the number one thing you gotta understand when it comes to failure is that success and failure comes in the same package. And for most people, once you open that gift, that box, guess what failure is? Right on top of it. <laughs> most of you are close it right back up. Hey, I'm, I'm good with that. I don't want that. I can't tell you how many times I wanted to give up when I got on this journey. In October 15, when I decided to change my life and change the way I eat, and change everything about myself. I've made that decision many times. But I can't tell you how many times it came to me, you know, I just, I can't continue to do this. I could not even run 
one mile the first day. Okay? The next day I went, I can do it again. And I keep going. I keep going. I keep going. I keep going. And then one day I decided, you know what, let me just take a break. <coughs> one day is turned into three days. And then I went back again. Everything in my body wanted to give up. Everything. Listen, when you are asking for something, make sure you know what you're asking for. Because who you are today in your comfort zone cannot live the life that your vision is currently seeing. If you're not willing to become it, you will never see it. And the only way you can become it is through the process. That's it. The worst thing television does to us is to show us the glory before we can even get a chance to witness their story. You don't want to change places. And a lot of people say, I want to be like you. No, you don't. No, you don't. Be careful what you ask. You know what I had to go through? Do you know at one point in my life, I could not even stand in front of a room to speak. I was shaking. I did not even want to ask the question in class because the, 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 the children would be front of me. So I would have to study on my own because I didn't want to raise my hand because I could not speak right. The process. I had to go to ESO class to learn English before I can become a speaker. I had to fail a couple of times before I can talk about it. <coughs> I had to change my own personal life from the streets to two years. Sleeping in motels, getting kicked out of motels, could not even pay the motel room. Getting put out with my stuff in the garbage can, in a, in a garbage trap um, bag. <coughs> getting evictions. Process. <coughs> Only thing that can keep you. One day, a friend of mine, John, asked me, Stanley, what keeps you going? After all you've been through, why do you keep pursuing who you are? Who you believe that you are to become? And then I had to tell him, if I don't have a greater vision for my life and a plan on how to get there. My present become my grave. Because I will be buried in the circumstances that I have been given and never see the plans that I personally want. Then you're going to have to make a choice. How bad do you want it? It's not sexy. Failure. Here's how to effectively fail. Number one is how you feel about your failure. <laughs> Albert Einstein made a great, a powerful statement when he said, failure is not an option. You probably heard that already. The first part of it. But what you haven't heard is the rest of it. Failure is not an option. Come on. It is a privilege. Can you finish it, your trip? <laughs> That's bad. But at least, at least you said part of it. It is a privilege reserved for those who only dare to try. So if you have failed, how many people have failed in the room? Look at that. All you have to do is change how you feel about it. That's all you have to do. What is it? 
Any, okay. Anybody there to share one thing that they failed on? Okay, what did you fail on? <laughs> uh, school. School? Okay. Well, did you? What did you do after you fell? How did you feel about it? Uh-huh. You feel bad about it? What did you do after that? Uh, after you feeling feeling sorry for yourself, feeling bad, what did you do after that? You told your mom. And what did you guys do together? We worked it out. Great. We work it out. Learn. <coughs> Learning is the beginning of change. Do you know change is prejudice? Prejudice? Doesn't happen for everybody. Change is prejudice. It only happens for those who are not afraid to go through that process and fail and learn from it. And from what you learn, then you do better. Uh, my barber, he, he owned a barbershop. And as he tried to open up a new barbershop, something happened between him and his partner. And the barbershop just was a complete mess and we lost it. When I went to him, he said, man, I don't, know, I don't think I want to do this again. I said, why are you allowing your experience to dictate your decision? When your decision should dictate your experience. It is what this, you decide that dictates what you will experience, not the other way around. So why don't you use that as a learning process? <coughs> Look what was done wrong. Look at all the things that you did wrong that you could have done better and start again. That is the only classroom for success. You can't learn that in the book. You can read about a thousand things about how to lose weight. But until you do one. So what is it this year? Your why that you want to do this. Why do you want to do it? The process. In the process, you've got to have a management system. By the way, I'm giving you key ingredients. This is one, this is two, three, four, five. The fifth one is measure your progress. You've got to have a point of reference. I didn't know if you're doing better. You gotta measure. For weight loss people, that's why they have weight scales. Measure your progress. And in the process, by the way, one thing I forgot to mention, one thing that we already did is declare it. Declaring publicly that, hey, this is the process I'm choosing to go towards. Because now you have accountability. As you measure your progress, You've got to now judge your results. One day as I went to go run, <coughs> how long do I have, by the way? One day as I went to go run, there was a couple, I think it was the first week I was running, and there was a couple that came and they were I thought I was running, but they seemed to be jogging, and they're just jogging and jogging. I'm like, okay, thank you, Buffalo. Let me know. Thank you, Buffalo. And they, they jogging and jogging. Thank you. And then before I knew it, they were like a block away from me. I'm like, no, no, no. I gotta do better. I gotta do better. I gotta do better. I gotta do better. And I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do what I thought was my all. And then two blocks away from me. I'm like, uh oh, no, nah, I ain't going out like that. I'm not going out like this. It's just a, a lady and a guy beating me. No, 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 no. And they, they were seen, they, they were not in the you know the best shape whatsoever. I mean, they were in shape, but not in the best shape. I'm like, I keep up with them, I keep up with them. Oh man, before you know it, it was like five blocks, six blocks. And I'm like, oh, but I'm losing my bread. Oh. And I did not keep up with them. And they beat me. They disappeared, I did not see where they went. But they beat me. But you know what I realized? What used to take me that day, one hour to do, I 
there is in 30 minutes. <coughs> Progress and results. Good job. Welcome to the new you. And as a bonus, I'm going to give you one more thing. The seventh key, fulfillment. Fulfillment comes from two places. It comes from yourself, having a sense of purpose of why you did what you do. Remember I told you in the beginning, the best word, the best three words you could say is, I did it. There's the other three words that other people can say to you. Job, well done. So now you have to fulfill it. Not only you have proven it to yourself, but also you've proven it to people who care for you only because you had a sense of vision, you had, a, you had goals, you went after it, you planned for it, you went through the process, you measured your progress, you had the result, now you feel fulfilled. There's different reasons why they say New Year's resolutions don't work. Some experts say it's 12, some, some say it's 4, Here's my personal take on it. The New Year's resolution, the only reason why, now this is a big one, I'm telling you, I'm giving you a bonus here. The only reason, the number one reason why New Year's resolution don't work is because you never put yourself on the list. The only reason why New Year's resolution don't work is because you never put yourself on the list. This has been Stanley Park here. My detox. Now I'm going to take some questions and answers if you have any questions. I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to you, but if you have any questions, um, comments, anything, I'm ready for you. Wow, I like you. What is your name? Christian. Christian, wow, wonderful name. My nephew. Your nephew, of course. We're family. We're family. What's your question? Uh, I'm looking for a relationship with God. Uh, how does that you forgot? Anybody have questions? In the process, how do you ask how you feel? What is the best you can do? Because I recently I failed at something. And it was hard for me to go back and run through it again and try you know, so I wanted to do that feeling again. So how do I put my mind to start again? Because why can't I want to do that process again? Mm -hmm. Not wanting to go back and do it again. Okay. The number one thing that you gotta ask yourself is whatever you're trying, was it really yours? Let me tell you a story. In, in the Andes Mountain, there was two tribes, one living on top of the mountain, the other one living at the bottom of the mountain. And those living at the top were bullied. They always come down and, you know, <coughs> with, the, with the bottom. One day they came to invade the, the village and they took a baby, they went up with it. And now the village went to fight back, and they got their best men to climb on them to go after the baby. They tried for days. They can get it. They tried for days, and they can get it. They went on, like, after uh, five weeks, it was like 100 feet. Like, it's a tall mountain. So they decided, you know what, this is a lost case. They're going to give up on it. And as they were coming down, they saw the mother of the child coming down with the baby strap on her back. So they were stunned. How did you do it? We got the best training. We got the most powerful men in the village. We've won so many battles. How did you do it and I can't do it? And the mother told them, it was not your baby. So whatever you're pursuing, 
that she supposedly failed at. Is it your baby? Because if it's not, it's easy to give up. How do you do it practically? Number one is how you feel about it. You only move by two things, the pain or pleasure, right? So whatever you conceive, because I don't really know what it is, but whatever you're conceiving to achieve, is it, is it compelling enough to where you will bear any harm to get through it? Now, you have to search deep in your soul. Because here's what happens to most people. Most people have what they, what I call the mental suggestion box. You know they have suggestion put in the box? Oh, you should do this, you should wear this, you should try this, you should try that. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden they find themselves doing something they have no idea that they're supposed to be here. A lot of ways, if you don't have a vision for your life, somebody's going to volunteer for it. And you find that their vision for you has nothing to do with you. So get deep down into your soul and search and see, okay, is this really what I want? If that's what I want, is it worth it? Because we've got to decide. Pleasure or pain? Is my situation so painful that I'm willing to bear anyhow? Or what can I learn from the failure? Strategize. You first don't succeed. Don't try again. Have another approach and try again because sometimes we just have the wrong plan. You know, we have the wrong route, same destination, but we're in the wrong route. We might need to adjust our goals. You know, so there's certain things that you really have to come, and that's why I did my project. You have to really search, okay, what was your goals? What was on top of you? What were you doing? Where did you mess up at? And is it worth it? Is it really your life passion, or is it something that you're doing just to do it? What is it? So until you answer those questions, because answers are, are, are questions are greater than answers. But until you can answer those questions, you really cannot come up with a valid reason why. The number one thing in life, you gotta have a reason why to do what you do. Did I answer your question? Anybody else? My man. You better remember this time. What is it? What did you do when people were picking at school? Oh, wow. Good question. That's a good question. Hmm. You just took me back to when I was in school and you were picking at me. What you got to understand is when somebody's picking at you, they're not really talking about you. They're talking about what they think about you. And if you can make the difference between what people think about you and what you think about yourself when you look in the mirror, then you have to find some kind of way to block what they're saying and choose to believe in what you are believing about yourself. Here's an example of that. When I was in school, I was picked on because of my accent. I was picked on so much that I didn't even want to be Asian. So I started to look at, okay, what is it that's unique about me that others don't have? And start making the difference in between their opinion and my personal belief. So to answer your question, make the difference between what they say and what you say. And whatever they say you don't like, choose the opposite and every day stand up in the mirror and repeat the opposite of what they say to you. things about you know failure a lot of times failure has to do with the plan 
It has nothing to do with the goal of the vision. It has to do with the plan with the route you're taking. I, I started on this path of speaking through the network marketing arena. And in the network marketing arena, I didn't really know why I was attracted to it. I just loved the network marketing arena. Um, I had no idea why I loved it until years later, four years down the road, I realized what I really loved about it. I hated to be on the phone calling people. I didn't want to do it. So no wonder why I wasn't having the success that everybody else was having, because I wasn't making that many phone calls. Was, you know, you're lucky if I made 10 phone calls a day. Some people were making 100 phone calls a day. So it wasn't really my passion. But what my passion was, give me a room. My goodness, I'll close the whole room. You know, that was my passion. But I had no idea that I was successful when I was doing it in the room. But when I started doing it on the phone, that was like a crazy thing. So a lot of time it has to do with the route you're taking. You know, do I still love the network marketing industry? Absolutely, I still love your model and everything. But the route that I was going was totally different because what my real purpose is is, is to be a speaker. And I've discovered that through that. But if I did not bear the process in the failure, for years, then I would never discover my true gift of speaking. So a lot of times, the process in the failure is going to guide you. That's why I'm telling you, this is the road, because when you're on the road, that's when you're gonna see the construction. You can't see that on the map. You can't see that on the map, it's in the road. When you get on the, right here, that's when the real, that's when the rubber meets the road. That's where you actually see it with your own two eyes and never can change every other of the failure. Anybody else? All right. Okay, okay I'm going to ask one, one question um, about one major, one major thing that stick with you. And anybody can actually um, do that. One major thing that stick with you, if you want to share, out of everything that, um, that I brought here. You will never perform beyond your own personal nature. Absolutely. You can't. You can't perform beyond your nature. Who else? Go ahead. Absolutely. Very good. good. Black them out. Absolutely. I like that. Anybody else? When you said we can go next to your number and tell them about these versions. You can buy them these 25 pounds for us. Give them a number. It's what they say you want. That's good. That's really good. <coughs> now you share twice. And because you share twice, you ask the question and you share. I'll give you a free CD. Okay. Absolutely, absolutely. Your trip, if you have said that quote, I will give you a face to you because you didn't do it, so you tripped on it, you tripped on it. She tripped. 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 I'm going to give you one, young man. Oh, right. Yes, I am, because you asked the most questions, and you were smile. I just love, love your smile. Oh, Here right. you go. Nice. Thank you. Good job, CJ. All right, so if anybody has any questions, we'll return back to none another than Dr. Faith <laughs> You are awesome, Thank you very much. Wasn't he dynamic? Yeah, absolutely. I'm saying, I told you, you just, whenever you're with Stan, just we had about 30 minutes, and I am recharged. And you helped me make a really good connection when you talked about failure. And you talked about just failure, not keeping the mindset that it's always a bad thing. I immediately connected to when you experience failure, that's really an opportunity to reinvent yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, and what could go wrong or what could have gone wrong is the plan. So if, the, if, there's, if there's a hole in the plan, then it's time to go back and check the plan and tweak some things, make a difference. If, if it's a problem in the way you think and your approach, it's time to reinvent and redesign. I really do believe that life is working in our favor. 
despite everything that's going on, tragedy, obstacles, um, <coughs> obstruction, I think that life is designed to make us better. And whether it's through a negative experience or a positive experience, it's how we look at it. It's definitely you said something powerful when you talk about your mindset and also put yourself first. So I'm going to hold you accountable on that. We're friends now on Facebook, and I'm just going to keep up with you just to make sure that you're applying those strategies and see how it's working. Is that okay? Wonderful. Thank you. Ms. Mama? Dr. Faith, just to expand on what you said about something being wrong with the plan. Yes. So they normally say that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Exactly. Something's wrong with the plan. I like that. Something's wrong with the plan. I mean, you set us all up with New Year's. I'm waiting until New Year's to set a resolution. Well, you could start right then and there. Like you did in October. Now you're even better to keep going in the New Year. So I really like that. So thank you so much mm -hmm. for coming and sharing with the Yes Network. We really appreciate you. Now I'm excited to hear about what you guys have going on. I want to share um, something that I'm doing. If you visit my website, LorettaFaithHarris.com, and you get connected to my newsletter, each month I deliver to your inbox a newsletter that's loaded with resources and information all designed to inspire, to empower, and educate you to live triumphantly. And what I will be participating in this year is a reinvention cruise. So this is my opportunity to get on the boat with some other individuals who are all about reinventing their life. And this opportunity will be a four-day, three-night cruise. And it's going to be a, tons of speakers, different workshop opportunities, but all geared towards helping you reinvent yourself going into the new year and continuing on on the path of success. I'm going to be talking about uh, basically everything and anything to help you experience ultimate success. I'm going to share from my life experiences, the things that I've endured, the things that I've learned and experienced in hopes of empowering you. So if you're interested, again, visit LorettaFaithHarris.com and there visit my event page. I have everything set up there and all you have to do, go to the month of April. All right, and then just log on there and you'll go to my whole page and everything. That'll give you more information. If you are very, very interested, my goal is five. Like you said, set that number. I set my goal to be five people that I invite to this cruise. Uh, one who can share my cabin, so, and you do, you know, sharing cabins with me, but uh, I locked in the price of $2.99. So five days, I'm sorry, four days, three nights, $2.99, we're going to Cancun, we're going to Mexico, we're going to just different spots, and it's going to be refreshing. So if you feel that this will be well worth your time at only $2.99, okay, all expense paid, then definitely talk with me personally. All right, and I want to get you locked in if you are interested. So if anybody wants to reinvent yourself, I have a cruise to take you on, so we can do just that together. What month is this? This is going to be the end of May. I'm sorry, the end of April and going into May. So it's going to be right on the end of what, April. From where? From, we're leaving from Fort Lauderdale and then we're setting sail. Okay, so um, let's talk if you're interested. I'll be around if you like to talk. Now, what I like to do is, since we are now meeting quarterly, the Yes Network, we have a group of individuals, I mean, that are so talented. One you just experienced here, Mr. Stanley, is one of our star speakers slash media mogul. I saw his video. Did you like do that? And was that your voice singing in the background? When can I get a CD, brother? <laughs> Did you all see that video that he posted? I heard that. I was just like, this guy, that's why I called you media mogul. I already know. Once I saw that, I knew that was you. So what we like to do is, since we're meeting quarterly, we want to have some of our guests bring some items. We'll help you promote your business, and we're going to use those items as giveaways. So I'd like to give away the first item to the individual that came here first. This person was here to help me set up. We had such a great conversation, and I just can't wait to sit down and meet and talk with her some more. What you're going to get is my latest book, 101 Reasons to Live. Okay, and it is basically an interactive journal that help individuals establish meaning and purpose each and every day that they live. And the number one reason to live is to fulfill your destiny, your calling and purpose. So I want to give that to none other than Miss Stephanie. Congratulations. Thank you for all of your help. 
Meet Desiree. This is a great read about a woman who experienced adversity and basically go through different areas of her life from childhood onto adulthood. So I want you to grab this book and read through it. I can, I'm sorry, I can't give you this book. This is the book she signed for me. I got the wrong book. I have a couple of books that she knows. So this is my book. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> this is mine. I'm sorry. I left hers on my counter or business office. Okay, here's the last one. No, I have two more. Okay. This is for the individual. Uh, this is a journal. Anybody who knows me, I'm big on journaling. So if you need to um, resolve and set those specific goals and write down your progress and your plan and your vision and your results, all right, and how you feel about it. I want to empower you with this journal and this Nova Southeastern yeah. University pen, which is only the best university in the whole world. It's number nine, actually, in nonprofit universities in the uh, world. Okay. So yes, I'm a Nova Shark. So I would like to give this away to an individual uh, who feel that they really need this. This is for you. Don't be ashamed. Who does this belong to? Who is Stanley on there? If you, oh, it belongs to Stanley. I like that. Presents and giveaway promotional, yes. and he'll put the, and he'll put the label on mm -hmm. them, right? He'll label that and then he'll box it really, really nice. Like, okay, look, I, I kind of gave away, and Stan, you gave some things away. Thank you for that. Again, guys, this has been an awesome opportunity to share, to be empowered, to learn, to grow. I'm going to move aside and give you the floor to kind of talk to us about who you are, what you do. Has everybody eaten? Everybody's okay with the food and everything? Okay, so I'll let you guys come up. Take a minute or two if you'd like to talk to us about what you're doing. Let us know how we can stay connected. What we're doing is streaming live. This is for the history and duration of our existence. So it will always be available for people to be empowered by your words of encouragement and to hear what you do. So, so make it free. Who will be first? Mr. Kenneth, come on up. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, it is a pleasure to be here, first of all, and I want to give honor to who honor is due, first of all, to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because if it were not for him, I would not be able to stand here today before you. With that said, I also want to thank uh, Dr. Uh, Faith for um, doing this and having this opportunity for entrepreneurs to uh, come out and connect with, with others uh, to promote uh, 
education, unity, and progress. Uh, to our speaker, fantastic job. Uh, the reason I, I had not heard of you before, but uh, you did a fantastic job uh, speaking to us, and it certainly inspired me to go on a little bit farther. Um, my name is Kenneth Howard. I am the owner and manager of KLH Financial Services. I've been in business since uh, 2003. Uh, just to give you a little bit of history on myself, I am a retired, early retired uh, banker. I was in the financial services business for 20 plus years um, with some of some local banks here as well as banks in the, um, in the Midwest. Um, I've been in Orlando since 1985. Um, started actually with uh, Sunbank here many years ago. Um, I'm married, two children, um, two college-age children, actually. And so, um, to tell you a little bit about the business, though, uh, the, the name of the business is KLH Financial Services. We are a tax and financial services business, primarily tax planning and preparation uh, and investment planning, helping small businesses and individuals uh, prepare for retirement, um, help them set up a spending plan. I heard you talk about shopaholics and spending. That's one of the things that, um, that I, I help individuals kind of set up a budget so that they can have a roadmap. Uh, if they have a vision, and they need a roadmap to help them get to where they want to be. Um, and it's, it's really uh, sort of like a family-owned business. Um, I, I am the manager, uh, owner, operator, uh, but I do work with other individuals, uh, other businesses in helping fulfill the vision of a company. I don't try and do it all myself, although I do have a securities license, a securities license seven. I have a life insurance 215, um, and, I, and I've been doing taxes for literally 25 years. Um, there are times that I need to put in an estate ter attorney. There are times I might need to uh, put in other professionals. Um, a CPA. I am not a CPA. Uh, so there are occasions where some businesses or individuals might need. A, um, a certified public accountant, for example. Well, I work with these individuals to help fulfill uh, the goal of the client. I'm very client-focused, uh, client-centric. Um, I try and understand the client's needs first and foremost, and then pull together a team, if necessary, to help fulfill uh, the, the project, if you will. Again, my name is Kenneth Howard. I thank Dr. Faye for this time. Um, and I brought along uh, a little something to give out. And it really is, um, and I'll tell you what it is, it's a 2014 Inspirations Calendar. And uh, if you all don't mind, I would like to give this to our speaker for his time and devotion uh, to bring in a good word to us today. Thank you again for your time. And uh, I'm sorry, do you have any questions of me before I step away? And I do apologize. Right. Do you have any questions, concerns, or? Pardon? Uh, I am I'm currently home based. I did have an office uh, in 2010 in Okoye. Uh, but due to the economy, and um, I pretty much downsized, and I'm back into a home office. Uh, I am mobile, so if you're interested in meeting with me, you just give me a call. Uh, I do have some cards here, and I'm going to leave them on the table uh, so that you all can pick them up if you desire. And um, again, I'm mobile, and I can meet you at a very nice place like this, or in your home or wherever you choose. But again, because I am client focused, I want to make it comfortable for you to meet with me, okay? And thank you very much.
your seminar at sea or whatever, then with the head of Mr. Kenneth over there, I can probably work and show you how to make that a 100% tax deduction. So instead of paying a thousand dollars to the cruise out of after tax money, you pay for it before tax. That's something I've been doing for the last 15, 16 years. I am not a tax um, um, professional. I am not a CPA, but I am a tax expert on strategies and for doing that. And we're able to talk to tax people for the last 15 or 16 years. So that is me, Marlene. My name is Business as a Travel Experience. And I would be happy to give you more information on that. But before I leave, I would like to bear my testimony as far as weight loss is concerned because some of you indicated that in 2014 you want to lose weight. And as Stanley said, if you don't have that plan for the roadmap, you can't really get there. But back in, um, at the beginning of 2013, I made a decision that I was going to lose weight. I made that decision. And until you actually are ready to do it, you, you can say I'm going to do it, but until your brain is ready to do it, you don't do it. You know what happens. And um, I knew that I had to change some things in my life. Certain things that I eat or have eaten, I needed to take them out of my life. Not because I was going on a weight loss diet, but because those things were no good for me, and I was allergic more or less to them. And no matter how little I ate, then I was sitting on them. So I made that decision for my lip diet. And then in April, I added a little spray to it. Four in the morning, four in the evening. And now, nine months later, I'm 50 pounds lighter. Some of you know me, you know what I was before. That is without exercise and without an actual weight loss diet in place. But I have stuck to my resolve, and I have done that. And this has helped me to burn the fact to not make me feel hungry, um, and it's been a wonderful process. So I just wanted to share that with you. I hope so. Follow up, Marley. Good uh, afternoon, everyone. It is afternoon. It and is. Happy 2014. Glad to be here um, with you all here with the Yes Network 2014 as we dine and learn. And I just want to take this opportunity to thank you, family. That was simplistically <laughs> what people need to get them from here to beyond. And I can um, certainly attest to that whole thing about the not starting at the new year. I started on this fit and lean um, journey in November. So I didn't want to wait till the first of the year because that's when everybody else starts. And I don't ever like to go down the path that everybody else goes down. I like to make my own path. So I am Yolanda, your trip triplet. And um, I just want to share with you a little bit about me and who I am and, and what I do. Um, I am a woman with a mission, and that mission is to make sure that everybody has goals. Um, and goals, are, to me, when we spoke about goals, and I, it was just like all these light bulbs going on. I'm like, can this man get out of my head? Um, but that just showed that it was like divinely ordered. But back in 2012, I um, had a revelation that actually happened to me 100 days before the end of the year, which was September 21st. I was posed the question, what will you do to make a difference in the next 100 days? And that was heavy. But a couple of days prior to that, I had an employee of mine come to me and say, I'm getting ready to turn 40 and I don't know what I'm going to do with myself. I have no goals. I need you to help me. So she stayed in my office and I worked um, as a public servant for uh, Orange County government. And I worked turning actually dirt to dollars. So anywhere you see where construction is going on here in Orange County, I can say I have had a hand in that, turning this, um, turning, turning those dirt, dirt into dollars. So if she's talking to me, my employee, I'm at my computer and I'm typing, Googling, um, goals. And the first thing that came up was smart goals. And so when that came up, I was familiar with that, that uh, concept.
us up. And so I'm just talking to her and telling her she can do things, she can do whatever she wants to be. And at the same time, I'm hitting print and all this paper's coming out. So I said, listen, you can do this. Um, you can be in place and doing what you want to do. When you turn 40, you've got to get some goals. You've got to be able to set goals. You've got to understand that there is a process for doing it. It's really simple. I said, have you ever heard of SMART goals? She had this blank look on her face. I said, it's really easy. I said, SMART is this hand, basically. So if you're SMART, you're specific. <coughs> it's measurable. It's attainable, it's reliable, and it's timely. And she was like, wow, and this is gold. So you got two hands, and so it's smart gold. And so when I talked with her with that, I took that and coupled that 100 days together and came up with, and I was sitting with Dr. Faith and a couple of friends that Friday night and said, I'm going to start this group um, to see if people want to get on board with 100 days and see if they can make a difference. And they were like, yeah. And so I put it out there on Facebook. and. It caught on and people got on board and people were excited to say, yes, I have something I want to do and yes, I want to take this window of time to do it. And I've seen people do all kinds of things. I've seen people start businesses. I've seen people lose weight. I've seen people um, start on these paths and journeys to lead their careers. I've seen people add to their careers. So it works. It's a really simple concept. I didn't come up with it. I'm putting my name on the part of the 100 day challenge because I did add that part so I thank God for the vision for that. So on this journey and I thought we'd get to that 100 day and that 100 day was January 2013 and we met at this table right here um, and we talked to a group of people who had joined us um, in the tribe and said that they want, had goals and they wanted to come and talk about what they were able to achieve. And we um, streamlined them, so we had some people, because it wasn't just here in Orlando, it was actually people all over the country that got on board. And we talked about what we did. So I was saying, okay, well, see y'all later, y'all have a happy life and keep on going. And so one person posed at the table, well, what are we supposed to do now? You've got to keep this going. Okay, so <laughs> that's exactly what I um, determined to do with that. I would help people get to their goals. And so now I have a tribe, um, and I guess I am the um, mommy of the tribe. And um, every day I wake up. When I wake up, the first thing after I you know, got my mind together and did what I needed to do and had a conversation with God so he can give and lead and direct me, I was thinking, what can I say to people to help encourage them so they can stay with their goals, they can stick to their goals. So it's in the mind, you know, and, and that's where it starts. You know, so you have to keep people encouraged and keep telling people they can go on. And that support becomes that accountability piece. Dr. Faye talked about that. She, uh, she put um, all of us in the room. We were all hooked. Now we're in this together. You know, so it became, we just became a partnership to talk about the things we opened our mouths and said that we were going to do here on this January the 18th, which is the 18th day of the year. And we said what we were going to do. And so um, I am sure Dr. Faith was going to check back with you and see where you are and where you're progressing. You should want that because you can't do it alone. And you can do it alone, but you can do it better when you have the encouragement of others. Yeah. So I also, it, when I'm not dreaming about um, dreaming up goals and helping and encouraging people, I'm writing. I do write, I blog. Um, I do have a, a blog called Your Trip Words and Thoughts. That's where I like to put my footprints on the world. Um, and I'm always doing that. I, I was writing in, in my mom's room and she kicked me out. And that's how I got in the world. Um, so I'm happy to do that. Also, um, once a month, I do have the opportunity to co-host with uh, Dr. Faith on her um, radio show. If you haven't um, called us, I'll definitely say the first Wednesdays of the month. Um, let me lay that plug out there. Catch us because it is incredible. And it, the people that we've been able to talk to, it's all about triumphant living. That is um, how Dr. Faith lives. Um, I'm drinking Kool-Aid, I believe it. No, she's incredible. She's incredible. That's my sister. She is incredible. And I, I thank God for the three years that I've been able to um, be on with her and meet the people that we've been able to uh, meet. And so um, if you don't have a goal, 
if you don't think you can do it, let this day be that first day that you decide that you will and that you can do it. When we see that CJ, that little, he's a little, a little boy, but he's sitting here, he's listening, he's paying attention, and if he can, then certainly we can too. And so we have to strive to survive. And I'm going to sit down because Dr. Faith is standing up. Thank you. Okay, Yolanda, I mean, you need to be running this show right. Yeah. I'm telling you. Okay. So, again, guys, thank you so much for coming. YoungEntrepreneurSociety.com. Sign up. Create your free profile on the Yes Network. Connect with over 100 like-minded business professionals. We're going to be here in March. March is Women's Month. So, we're going to have a dynamic speaker there to empower us men. Bring your women. Bring your wives. Your wife. Not wives. <laughs> Bring your friends. Okay, guys, thank you so much for coming. That's it. Thanks. Uh, I have one last thing to share. Yes. Uh, just, uh, 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 yeah. This is going to be short. I'm currently serving as uh, president of an organization called Toastmasters. Uh, Toastmasters is a nonprofit organization that helps people with their speaking skills and leadership skills. Uh, you know, some people have different reasons why they do it. Um, and so the, the good thing about Toastmasters is you get to practice your communication. One of the things I usually tell people is you can't lead without speaking, you can't speak without leading. The minute you open your mouth, you automatically seem like a speaker. And working on your communication skills is not an option. So if anybody wants to increase their leadership skills and, um, as well as their communication skills, Toastmasters is the place where you're all invited. I'm going to go ahead and pass out these flyers so you can get that information.